So seriously, when you hear kids singing this, they're basically celebrating ritual sacrifice. Lawadi Six here and welcome back to another video. A little bit of a change of location um, because the baby's sleeping over there and if we're too loud, we're gonna wake her up, right? Mm -hmm. So recently we've been doing what? Recently I keep saying sound of the baby. Everybody have been parents have definitely know they need to do that. But every single time when I sing this song, when I was a child, my parents taught me and his keep laughing. Now the reason I keep laughing, Vivi, is because some of the songs that you're singing I mean, I know that children's songs have like weird origins and stuff, mm -hmm. but China puts out a whole different level of weird. Come on, you gotta think about like that's out the history. That's like represent our generation. Now the funny thing is about the children's songs that I keep hearing you sing, they cover a whole swath of Chinese history, you know? <laughs> Communism, <laughs> all kinds of crazy ideas. So basically we're gonna go through a couple of these. You're gonna show me three songs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you three songs from my childhood. Okay. okay? We're gonna attempt to explain them, okay? It's a song battle. It's like a song battle. You ready? Okay. Let's do this. Round one. All right, I'm gonna start out with the song that I grew up with, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is a very simple, very normal, gentle song, and it's called I Can Sing a Rainbow, okay? Oh. This one's a little different. But you just like always wrong. <laughs> Very simple song. It's really comforting. Can, it's actually like, quite nice. Yeah, I can sing the song to put baby sleep. To be honest, that was the song that my mom always sang to me before bed. She would always sing three or four songs to me before I fell asleep as a kid. And to this day, when I'm like three or four years old, I still remember that being my favorite. What do you my think? Mom it's never <laughs> sang song for me, even story. I just put myself to sleep. <laughs> and you know, it's really funny, when I studied uh, class in meteorology, mm -hmm. we're learning, learning about the color spectrum and the sun and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember recalling the lyrics of that song, just so I could remember the order of colors in the rainbow. But that one was different, so I feel like my mom was teaching me wrong the whole time. And she's a science teacher. Did you fail? No. Okay, so it's my turn to show you the song. I just recently sang it to Olivia. I can't wait. Wait, 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 wait. Just song. No, 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 no. Before you explain this, let me just, uh, my Chinese is pretty good. I got those lyrics. Now, the beginning of the song was completely normal, but it, it sounded really shit, to be honest. Like, the, the, the vocals were kind of really annoying, and it was that typical Chinese, like, screechy. I can sing better. I know you can. <laughs> anyway, what I got from that song is it's about, correct me if I'm wrong, it's about a bird that comes to this little girl's hometown every spring. And she says, next year, next year, you should come back to my hometown because it's gonna be prettier. Mm -hmm. Because, not because the flowers are in bloom, not because the weather is nice, not because of fresh air. In fact, quite the contrary, because they're gonna build a big factory. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, I have a question. How does that pertain to a bird? Why does a bird want to live in a factory? Cause. <laughs> Cause what? They change a new factory and new machine probably is not that polluted. Oh, okay. <laughs> so maybe the, the previous factory was very polluting. And this is like a clean burning factory. This is great. It's a, yeah. a kid's song about green energy, apparently. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is uh, definitely a communist song. And it's probably during the Mao period when they were promoting building factories and instigating the yeah. economy and production. Like long time ago, having factory means you're City gonna be wealthy. That's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. I hope that little bird not gonna get cancer. I hope I hope that little bird just stays where she is. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Build it up with wood and clay, wood and clay. Now, 
This is about London Bridge. What do you think the song is actually about? Bridge falling down. The bridge falling down. And that's it. Very simple, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Vivi, unfortunately, the song has some darker origins, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this song is actually not about shoddy civil engineering. It's not about poor workmanship. It's actually about immurement. Have you ever heard that word before? Immurement is the practice of burying someone alive so they slowly die of starvation or lack of air. And what they did back then was in order to make the structure or bridge or buildings more strong, stronger, they would bury children alive until they starved or suffocated to death. And that idea was that uh, the children would die inside and make the structure stronger for its uh, duration, right? So perhaps this song is you know, kind of like a celebration. Maybe the children are celebrating that London Bridge is falling down and maybe they'll be free. <laughs> I don't know why, this song reminds me of my mom singing to the baby. That cringed me so hard. Your mom sang this song to the baby? This version. Pause this, I know this song. So this song is called Little Rabbit, mm -hmm. right? And it's basically a lesson to not allow strangers to come into your house. That's correct. You should teach kids never open the door for a stranger. Sure. So it says, Xiao Tu a quiet guai. The little rabbit you're be, be good. Mm -hmm. be, be obedient. Ba Meng Kai Kai, open the door for me. Mm -hmm. I want to come in. Bu Kai, Bu Kai, Wo Bu Kai. I'm not going to open the door mm -hmm. because mom is not home yet. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's a pretty good lesson for kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of creepy though. Why? I don't know. I just like, I think that was one of the first Chinese kids' songs that I actually learned. I don't know why I knew it though. I didn't <laughs> listen to children's songs in my free time, okay? I promise, <laughs> promise you a lot. With okay, I got one more for you, okay? Okay. Basically, this song is called Jimmy Crack Corn, okay? What's that? What means for Jimmy Crack Corn? Well, the lyrics are Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. The master's gone away, okay? Do you, can you guess what that means? Someone steal the corn? Okay, fair enough. That's a good guess. This is actually one of many children's songs that have slave origins. So this is about a black slave back in the slavery period of America. And his job was to follow his master around. So he's a, he'd pick corn for his job, right? He'd follow his master around. And if you re read the lyrics more, you'll, you'll understand this. But his job was to make the flies go away from the horse. The reason being is these blue flies would bite the horse and then the horse would buck. Mm -hmm. So the master, the white guy, would fly off the horse sometimes and it's dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened was, is actually a blue fly bit the horse, the master got bucked off and he died, mm -hmm. right? So the slave master is dead. Mm -hmm. So now Jimmy, probably the slave's name, right? He is celebrating by drinking actually. So later on, I think there's a lyric in there that alludes to drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. So he's celebrating maybe with his other slave friends because the white master is now dead. So it's kind of weird, like it's a little bit dark, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's kind of like retribution because the slaves got I, even. I really think when Children's songs shouldn't relate with death or like alcohol. I know, it's right? kind of weird. Like when you, if you hear kids singing this or people singing it to children, they're actually singing a song about some black guys getting messed up on like whiskey or something, <laughs> celebrating the death of their slave master. But a lot of songs from the past, especially kids' songs, have mm -hmm. origins from slavery. So it's kind of weird. I think a lot of the slaves would use music as a way to cope from all the dark times, the bad times. Most of the songs is from black people. You white people don't make songs. Yeah, this is true. Actually, a lot of our music culture in America comes from black culture and black society, right? So you're so... keep bragging about, oh, our culture, our song, and keep laughing about our song. At least our song is from yellow people. So what? I, America is a country for all races, you racist. Yeah, then don't laugh at me. So Vivi, you have one more song for me, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, this song is actually a Cantonese song. Since I'm a Cantonese girl, I grew up with this. Actually, this song keep creeping me out. So unfortunately, I'm not going to understand this one. Yeah, I will explain to you. Okay. So 
sounds a bit almost Soviet, Soviet Union. So I don't understand anything in that song, but I would say that the musical quality is better than the other two. Cause that's kind of the song. <laughs> anyway, uh, I try to explain this. It's like um, the whole family tried to uh, split the watermelon, mm -hmm. and uh, but the little kid swallowed two pit. So two seeds. Two seed, and he was so paranoid about that, and asked the mom. And he actually accidentally had the little little watermelon plant grow out <laughs> from his hat, and then like he asked his mom, "What can they? What can he do?" And the mom was saying, "Like it's okay. That means like in the four seasons, we always will have watermelon to eat." But that actually creeps me out since I was a kid. Why? Your parents eating your organ, basically. Oh yeah, because your head's growing watermelon, so they're yeah. eating your head. That's really creepy. That is kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah. I think what we can say is that children's songs have some strange origins. They are very nostalgic for us. I mean, like, this is the stuff we grow up with. It kind of calls back to the way our parents raised us and those warm memories, right? Mm -hmm. Except for you. <laughs> Fortunately, our baby has the opportunity to learn lots of different songs from our childhood, so mm -hmm. it's one of the advantages of raising a mixed race baby, don't you think? Cool. All right, thank you so much, Law Winners. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe below, and we'll see you on the next episode. See ya. High five. <laughs>